How's it going, guys? Welcome back to the Blue Welcome back to Bubba Monday. Thank you guys for being patient. I have been kind of sick last week, but feeling a lot better now. So we're going to be jumping into it. So bye. Happy Valentine's Day. Hope you're having a good one if you celebrate. If you don't, whatever. Hope you're having a good Monday. But I just still think it's nice. We're here on Valentine's Day. So last time we kind of got the stage set up and we had a really amazing scene of Seattle. Kind of an inspirational like, hey, you know, the world's not quite over yet. We still have something to fight for moment. But for me, it was kind of a realization of just how like really, truly desperate things are. Like, it was already bad. We knew it was bad. But it's still, like, really, truly understanding what that means. Yeah, I have no idea what to expect, except I'm pretty sure we're all just on borrowed time at this point. I don't think there's really any true hope at this rate. But hey, you know what? Fighting spirit of humanity. Don't give up. Just do the best you can. So, we're going to jump into it, and we're going to continue and see how the story plays out now for the War Dogs. Yes, 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 yes. Hope you guys are having a good time and let's just jump into it. Tatsunami, Kisama wa kono mama watashi ni tsuite koi. Ha, hi. There you go. I'd never crossed my mind that the Major would invite me to a squadron commander level meeting literally days after my appointment. Man, talk about stressful. I had no idea Squadron Commander was supposed to pro process this much information even outside of combat operations. She's really reasonable, which I love. I love the fact that she's reasonable but firm. Good, good. Yeah, it's not like I'm dumb, simply uninformed. For the sake of my self esteem, that's what I'm going with. So no ikida. Go you know, just sent on that's the carana. Narao yuri narero da. Ha! Yes, ma'am. Except my first battle went pretty well, considering I'm still alive and breathing. This, on the other hand, was complete disaster. Everyone was staring at me like I was some cha cha charity case. I almost said chastity case. I'm like, that that's not right. Just, just look like you know what you're doing. It'll be fine. Sheesh, I made to read me like an open book. Oh, surprise, surprise. Hi. Just putting it mildly, numbers don't lie, and the ones we just saw spelled disaster for us. I never thought I'd say this, but thank God for the Imperial military. If we hadn't stepped in, the Empire would have collapsed a long time ago. There's no way we could have had a functional state without military rule. I like interesting. Poverty is the parent of revolution and crime. I wonder if that's a quote from something because it sounds like it is. If you happen to know the source of that, like it'd be, I'd be very curious to know because uh, I'm guessing it's a maybe a common phrase or a like uh, a philosophical like statement made by a Japanese writer or philosopher or something. So it'd be kind of cool to know. Like I, I like that's one of the things. Like too, like. I've always talked about how, like, my education was just horrifically negligent of a, mut a lot of culture outside the United States and direct correlation to things like Europe, Germany, uh, you know, um, where a lot of um, Americans naturalized from. And so, like, I didn't know much about Japan at all until just a few years ago, really. Uh, but one of the things I think is woefully under uh, explored in education, even in backgrounds of like uh, my own country, America, or even like like even Roman, Greek, uh, like European, it's philosophy. I love philosophy. I think it's really fascinating and interesting to talk about, but I know very little fundamental philosophy. I understand maybe general concepts of philosophy, but I never got a chance to read anything like published by notable philosophers of history, nor have I even read a whole lot of discourses, especially in education. Like a lot of that stuff I had to find on my own and I know very, very little, but I think it's really interesting. So 
one thing I have no exposure to would be traditional Japanese philosophers. Like, what were their points of view? What were some of the things they said? I wonder if they were ever influenced by uh, some of the philosophies from the West, because uh, there were trade uh, and, uh, you know, exchanges of information, especially <clears throat> during the Industrial Revolution. So how did that influence uh, the, the thinking of Greater Japan? Like, is there any source of influence directly? Was a lot of it Shinto based and Buddhist based from the from this, uh, you know, the moral slash uh, spiritual side of things? Or were there a lot of secular uh, philosophers? Because a lot of philosophers from Europe were religious in nature because religion was just so heavily pushed and so heavily enforced. But I don't know if that was the case in Japan. Like, I know spiritualism has always been, like, a traditional part of Japanese culture, but I also feel like it was never... It, it never was presented to me as aggressive. Like, I've never heard of Japan and China having, like, effectively inquisitions, you know, purging people who don't believe. But then again, I don't know. I don't... I just don't know enough about Japanese history. So if anyone feels free, like, please let me know in the comments, like... Is there anything of interesting to, of interest that you've learned about philosophy, uh, Japanese cultural philosophy, Japanese spiritual history? Like, it'd be kind of interesting to hear about that stuff. At least, like, you know, a Sparks Notes version. I can obviously go, and I'll probably do some of my own research, but if you got a direction you'd like to point me in, maybe a notable person you'd like to recommend me to check out, like, I'd love to know that. Thank you. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. Let's keep going. Hi. これは貴様以外のものにとってはある程度基本的な情報であり、秘密ではない。Convenient cuz I and you and me we don't know any of this. わかりました。現在住環境についてはアメリカの協力もあって、なんとか対応できている。Good. So that's why most of our people aren't sleeping on the streets. The same goes for us actually. The quarters are our requisition motel. だが、反面大きな問題も発生している。日本人居留区を設定するために God, could you imagine having to actually track that? Like, man, being in government must suck. People are furious and for good reason. Driven out of their homes when they lived their generations only to have their government give them away to some foreigners? That's just nuts, man. Right. Helps having a common enemy. Right. Hi. Yeah, but come on. The United States stole from its own citizens. I can't see that for life of me how that was a good idea. Property rights are sacred around these parts. Well, it's an it, it's an initiative from the American government. I'm sure they thought of the consequences before they went ahead with it, but I can't help but be a little worried. Yeah, tell me about it. I have no earthly idea how they're going to keep up with the food demand, honestly. Their population is severely, like, impacted from the disaster, and yet I just don't understand how they're going to keep the the fields growing. Because even if they can keep them growing now, like, the, the salt storms must, like, it's like putting a clock on them. Oh, yeah. Right. Man. And the problem is, too, like, you gotta try and go for bumper, like, quick crops. Uh, heck, I mean, alfalfa is one of the best ones for quickness, so, but it'd be hard to convince people to eat alfalfa. Oh, yeah. Work, like, probably, like, 60, 80-hour weeks. Hardly ever getting fed for it at all. 
Yeah, real, really, really easy to see how the morale is just in the toilet. Well, yeah. Oh, fetch, and there's really not an actual answer here. Yeah, it's hard to explain that to starving people, though. It ain't amateurs playing around with shovels and fertilizer and stuff. Right. In, a, in an isolated condition, that would be fine, but like, like people, people are people, and when they're desperate, they're not going to listen to reasonable arguments like this. Not like, mo not, 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 not enough of them. I imagine a majority would listen to that. They'd be grumbling, but majority would. But there's going to be that small portion of insane people that for some reason decide that like they must be more right than anybody else who will like get enough support eventually that they're going to do something stupid. Challenging. You'd have to isolate them. Yeah, he's starting to think. That could work, except if you default on those plans at all, it'll make things much worse. If you publish a plan, you really need to be sticking to it. You like, you need to be able to tangibly produce results along that timetable because if it doesn't work out the way you say it will, it will actually make it far worse. You'll effectively be like tempering them for now and letting things fester and then perhaps giving them an outlet to make things worse. If you want to see a great example of that, look at what Star Citizen's recently been doing to their fans because, oh boy. <laughs> Hmm. Transparency is a double-edged sword. I, I definitely think in the most cases, I agree transparency is like the best policy. However, I think it's foolish to assume that a government would be able to function without having levels of secrecy and these to knows. It's not our... It's like... I don't know. There's a lot of interesting debate to be made about this, but I, when push comes to shove, I think secrets are a tool. Like money and time, information is powerful and needs to be applied properly. And there are certain things that are just not any good in the hands of the public. If anything, they can be detrimental. They can make things worse. Uh, anytime you make information available, you also open yourself up to criticism. Transparency is fantastic, and it can help with tempering attitudes, but at the same time... Anybody who feels like they have better ideas, it can stoke the fire for them, making it feel like they really could do better because they assume that they have all the information they need to know when they don't. So. In a critical situation like this, transparency might be more detrimental because of the, the the state of things. If things were more on the level, if things were at least manageable and like kind of we could provide the basic necessities properly, I'd say transparency is fantastic. But when you aren't providing it, there are going to be things that are necessities that need to be done that they're not going to like. like Maybe he doesn't even realize, for instance, that whilst their rations have gone down in quality, maybe Hibiki and the rest of the TSF, the military personnel, are getting three square meals a day. Maybe that's not the case for the majority of people. Maybe other families, including like kids, are only getting two meals a day. You know? That's a lot to be stretching, like, for people. And so, full transparency could actually rile them up even worse, feeling like it's an injustice here, you know? It's a really odd thing. So, whilst I'd say in 
most cases, transparency is the best for majority of things. There are exceptions, there are times and places, and I actually would say in this case, I would disagree with Hibiki. それを待っている方もそれぞれの立場で苦労しているのは変わりませんなるほどあとはこれはちょっと話がずれますが彼らだけに頼らずこちらで別の手を進めておく必要もありますね状況をよく知らずに楽観的なことを述べますが合成タンパクの生産プラントうん。インテレスティング。ああいったものをここに建設するであるとか。民間には到底無理なことを並行して進めるという。すみません。さすがに楽観的に意見しすぎました。うん。なんだ、もう意見は終わりかはい。すみません
sometimes it's better to have people who are good leaders but don't want to be leaders. They're the best ones. I talked about Washington before, but I mean, there's a lot about that man that I admire. He's not perfect, but there's a lot to be there. Anyway, let's move on. We're getting into politicals again. I need to be careful. <laughs> Uh, Jinguji, she's such a good leader. I, I love her as commander. I barely know my butt from my elbow here, but somehow I stumbled upon the same answer as someone who has the whole picture in mind. Hope I'm getting a passing mark. Anyway, acting as a sounding board is kind of an errand. I suppose it would be the Major's errand boy. It's pretty darn clear that I gotta get a grip on Seattle's situation ASAP. Can't keep acting like I'm here on vacation. If I'm right, the salt's the real problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Again, all you need to know is the story of the conquering and destruction of Carthage to know that, like, the way Rome, like, sent a message about how much they really didn't like Carthage uh, doing what they did, they salted the earth there. They took the, crop the croppable soil and they made it so that it, for, like, hundreds of years, was just effectively barren wasteland because there's too much salt in the ground to make good crop. <laughs> よく考えろ。さっきのような発想ができるのなら少し引いてみれば、貴様ならわかるはずだ。えっと、ここはどういう場所だ？Seattle. Uh, we're in the Japanese Empire, right? The Takuma Lesho. Huh? Oh. そうか。I think what he's going to draw the conclusion of here also is that they're in a different location with different temperament. So the farmers here, like the farmers are experts of farming in Japan, not experts in farming in Seattle. Oh, so even if we work really hard, we don't actually get to actually claim our food. The food all goes to the United States and then they allot it to us. Ah, that's an inconvenient truth. One that's absolutely devastating to our people's morale. The more we pour our blood, sweat, and tears into growing the land, the harder it feels like knowing that we'll have to hand it over sooner or later. At this point, it's a powder keg. Like... There's like so many angles that could set all this off, like the domino effect. But the problem is there's so many triggers here. And even if you account for all the proper triggers, something's likely to come up that you didn't expect. Fetch. Yeah, that's a vision of the future right there. The guys with the know-how to grow crops and cultivate the land are a lifeline of sorts to the rest of the community. But the people on the street would not take kindly to having less food on the table simply because our farmers want to throw in the towel. As patient as our population is, that'd be a bridge too far. Yeah, no people's, no people's too, like, perfectly resilient. Yeah. Oh my gosh, absolutely. Hmm, interesting. I wonder what they proposed. Okay. So, yeah, but the problem here is, like, even if it becomes, like, your territory, like, you're effectively, like, you're vassals, essentially. Even if they, they say it's yours, it's, is it really? At least in theory. What's that supposed to mean? The negotiations are going well? Is it taking too much time to iron out an agreement? Or maybe the United States is dragging its feet and asking for unreasonable concessions? 
アメリカはな住居を挑発された市民に対し資産の補填として開拓された土地を無償譲渡すると言っている。So to keep their people happy, they're essentially saying like, hey, your guys are kicked out, but you'll get to go back after all the hard work's been done. <laughs> right. I see the spin of the American side of things and why that makes sense. I see. The Americans must have decided that it's best way to expert,、uh, expropriate this and、uh, seem more palatable. And it ain't like we're in any position to tell them what they can or can't do. But, so, the American citizens are the same as the American citizens. Well, yeah, no, this is a raw deal for Japan, but I also totally see why the Americans are doing it. America is the same as the American citizens. They're the ones that proposed it. We can't put all the blame on the people who basically got kicked out of their homes at gunpoint. Anyone would fault the Japanese in their position. The US government was responsible for coming up with a policy to relocate Japanese refugees and then implemented it. They chose to do it this way, so it's only right they deal with the unintended consequences. I don't think it was unintended, though. I'd say it's pretty much American history in a nutshell. <sighs> She must be talking about the nationalists. Some policies are out of bounds for any decent government, but if grassroots movements are starting to push for them, well, then it's only a matter of enacting measures that the public demands. All this trick in the book. Still, there's no way all this comes down to simple racism. The Americans can't afford to be stupid these days, so what's the angle? I don't even think it's technically racism. It's nationalism. It's not that you're Japanese. It's the fact that you're not American. <laughs> like, that's the problem. Like, it has nothing to do with you being Japanese. Like, you could be Canadian before the war. Like, you could be anything. And heck, it's something we deal with right now. There's a lot of people who have discontent with people who are, like, immigrating legally and illegally into the United States because there's just this sense that, like, They're doing stuff and taking things that should be just for Americans. But the, the ironic thing is that any American that isn't a Native American is essentially the same thing. If anything, it's more reprehensible because we took land by force. You know, my brilliant ancestors were, were guilty of that in one way or another. So it's like. It's odd. It's really odd to have, like, the type of attitude. Like, it's something I just don't truly understand, really. But I also see it enough in real politics now that imagining in a time like this where so much land that even was good has now been like ruined, of course it's going to be really tough to see like effectively like vassal refugees coming and taking land from you. Like, that's hard. And like, it's going to be easy to rally people to support more extreme racially slash culturally motivated, like, uh, Like antitrust laws in order to try and preserve the national pride and make sure that the American people keep what's theirs. Man, politics sure is complicated business. It's not like I'm gonna have a light bulb moment to figure everything out. So, I'm gonna have a light bulb moment to figure everything out. So, I'm gonna have a light bulb moment to figure everything out. So, I'm gonna have a light bulb moment to figure everything out. So, I'm gonna have a light bulb moment to figure e Right. It makes sense. I mean, especially given the times, like they had to be.、はい、Taste ain't nothing to write home about, but that stuff we made is almost as nutritious as the real thing. Wish they could spruce up the flavor a bit, though. That's good. <laughs> But the problem is, do we have staff to run it? Holy crap, this is huge news! It sounds like my suggestion was right on the money. I guess I really do have my priorities straight. Hmm. The Empire's in a tough spot because we lack the industrial base. We don't have anything to trade. Sounds like that's going to change soon. And if synthetic foods we're producing, that's all the better. The main cause of war right now is competition for resources, food, water, and air. The battle on the East Coast started as a contest over one of the few viable tracts of land left. That's also why Japan became a leader in offshore production technology. We didn't have anywhere near enough land to be self sufficient, so we had to get creative. 
The other hand, the land rich country like the United States never felt the need to delve too deeply into that area until now, that is. I guess, so I guess the poverty is the parent of revolution after all. Whatever came up with that one must be a pretty smart guy. Hell, we could even use our new food production capabilities to put an end to the war against the French and the Canadians. Yeah. Takaru. Yep. Yeah. 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 I think in war, like, there is a strong tactical advantage to targeting civilian production. Like, it works. Attacking civilian targets. It works. It sucks. And I think it's the worst thing, the worst part of war. Not even, like, limiting yourself to military targets, but it works. So, yeah. In a war with the United States, oh no, they got this really effective food production system. It's incredibly valuable right now. It's effectively a, a, a crucial resource. Of course it's going to be a target for a stupid attack. Yes, that's what I Gosh darn it. Ah, uh, crap, she's right. Someone, someone might try and attack the plant or even capture it. Food is that important these days. Because it was safer near Hawaii. No surprise. The Major's displeasure is written all over her face. Yeah, it's about time I learned life ain't just sunshine and rainbows. The plant's gonna rock the boat, that much is certain. But I have my doubts we would relocate it to Seattle if we had no choice but to leave security to the Americans. Looks like to me, like, looks like we're trying to kill two birds with one stone. Massively improving the Empire's production capabilities and signaling the Empire's mar martial prowess to the world. And maybe, just maybe, that's why we didn't ask the United States for help during the 6th Battalion Battle of Seattle. Because we wanted to prove we can take care of our own business. Right. Hi. <sighs> And you don't want to be too open about this information because then you could just invite the targeting all the more. I think he's thinking too short term. Can't contact their friends or family, completely in the dark whether their loved ones are dead or alive. There ain't enough food, and there's not much to work with either. Life under these conditions is nasty, brutish, and short. Anyone would be stressed to hell and back. Anxiety kills. Yes, it does. Without the light at the end of the tunnel, people may try to end it themselves. Hmm. I mean, I don't think they have the resources to do it, but it instantly made me think, like, what if they built, like, a traditional Japanese shrine here, you know? I mean... Maybe that would be seen as sacrilegious, but like, I think traditions are a huge way to help like foster a sense of community and like ownership and, and, and roots. So like putting down traditional like shrines and buildings, building gardens and things that are reminiscent of Japan. It's actually really interesting. Uh, in my hometown, I grew up in a, in a small city in Idaho, but we had a sister uh, sister city program that was established like in the 80s or 90s where essentially like smaller cities in the United States reached out to international cities that were comparable in size and had very like and, and like, just like they were similar in everything except for the like their location essentially and like they would exchange information and like kind of talk about each other to each other and ironically my city had a sister city in, of a small town in japan north of tokyo along the coast now obviously i grew up in a non-coastal town but 
both of our communities were heavily focused in farming and scientific development industries. And I just remember like doing that. And part of like this kind of cultural exchange, there's a part of uh, a river, there's a river that goes through our town and there's a really beautiful uh, place around the river we, uh, called the Green Belt, which is just this kind of like effectively a park slash national preserve that's just kind of maintained and has lots of paths and walkways and it's just it's just naturally pretty and there's a section of the path that was dedicated to J our sister city japan so we had a whole bunch of these like artistic structures built like we have a, like a little like shrine um with japanese characters there's some traditional like there's lanterns that look like traditional like paper lanterns but they're made of plastic so they stay up all year long and um we have like we have like a miniature like tori tori is it tori tori gates like the the spiritual gates um and like this really intricate um waterfall garden you could say like it's a it's like it's, a, it's made to they took like parts of the river and redirected it to make these bubbling natural looking brooks and like uh, waterfalls that just kind of go through this entire little garden area. It's really pretty and it's just wonderful because it really is feeling like you got a little slice of Japan in the middle of Idaho, which is like the most un like foreign area in, in the United States. I feel like it's this backcountry, like good old boys territory. So it was really cool growing up seeing that. I never even realized how much about Japan I would be interacting with, like as I grew older. But I, I had a strong appreciation of that little city. That I, I can't remember the name of it, and I need to look it up. But I've been away from home so long, I, I just can't recall what it was. If I find any pictures, maybe I'll post them here. But otherwise, yeah, it's just it was just cool being able to see. So anyway, maybe they can do something like that, something that helps this place feel more like their home. You know something that helps them feel like, you know, we're not actually home, but this is now home. And like, it's a place we can claim and we're going to make it ours. That's right. People need to realize this is the new Japan. Oh yeah. Like having festivals and stuff. That'd be such a good idea. Because what do you have at a festival when you can't feed people? I don't know. Ooh, I have no idea. What else can I do? Well, the stuff other than surface pilots like me could do, for starters. Be seen. That could be a big part of it, too. You guys are kind of like the heroes. They might just... Just seeing you guys being happy and optimistic could be a lot... Do a lot of good. Wait, that's it? Is that really all I can do? Eh, why am I so useless? This is all my fault. I never thought about stuff like politics and all that. During my st student days, I was fine with someone else picking up the slack. And when I became a surface pilot, I was fully converted to the idea of division of labor. My job shooting aliens dead. Politics is something else, somebody else's business. It's only after getting a command position that I've been forced to realize we live in a society. It's all that means is practice. <laughs> It has to be something else I can do. たつなみ本来軍隊は死なければいけないことが少なければ少ないほどいいんだ。その状態のことを人々は平和と呼ぶ。今我々がしなければならないことは少しでもその状態に近づけてやることだ。Right。それこそが人心を安定させることになる。それ
internal agents are going to be one of our biggest threats because we just don't have an infrastructure to properly like keep an eye out on things. Well, you can conju you can't conjure additional soldiers out of thin air. Non-undercover agents. That's a different matter entirely. They're not entirely without risk, but I'd rather keep Seattle from burning, thank you very much. Oh, interesting. That's clever. So the military is also serving as a temp agency now, huh? We have a lot on our plate. Tatsunami, Kokokara, Tago Muyoda, Buka de Atem. Okay. ありがとうございました。現時点では私を含め限られた極少数の人間しか知らない話だ。Right. Are you kidding me? Dude, this is a freaking military base. さしの通り、基地内の軍人が関与している可能性がある。この件に関して現在、内定を進めているところだ。I can't remember what the story was, but uh, Isumi's training, remember? Like they talked about that, like steal where they were like stealing food and having a black market. It's kind of interesting that we're having kind of a callback to that in a way. Ah! Ah! I clicked the wrong thing. <laughs> Embezzlement, now of all times. Uh, it's exactly because of the times we live in the folks are likely to turn into foxes guarding the hen house. Uh, crap, of course. Ways to escape, ways to feel like you can be safe. It's a big problem with poverty everywhere. Because, like, life can be really hard when you're living in poverty. And drugs can seem like a good solution. But in fact, it exacerbates the problem. It it makes it so that you have even less resources to go around. It leads to unnecessary deaths and malnutrition and malhealth. And oh man, ma, ma, yaku. 実際昔から難民キャンプなどでは珍しくはない話だ。いつだってどこからか弱者の匂いを嗅ぎつけて売人が寄ってくる。Ain't that the truth? 外部から流入してきたと考えられるものもあれば、軍が所有しているはずの鎮静剤などが現場で発見されたこともある。Oh man, ah,、oh, they're taking drugs from the military and doping up our people. That sucks. So, それは。There's no point in trying to turn a blind eye to this. It's a smoking gun. Irrefutable proof: soldiers from the base are involved in making and dealing drugs. Nothing. No, my guess is you do not bring this kind of thing up until you have an actual solution. All you're going to do is make people upset, and if you don't have a plan, it's going to be worse. You need to take it to them and be like, hey, we've discovered embezzlement. What? And then they're like, here's our plan to fix it. Okay. Okay. This is exactly a good reason why pure transparency is a problem sometimes. Because sometimes you can make yourself inadvertently shoot yourself in the foot by getting people riled up without an actionable plan. Then they might go do something stupid. That was my guess. We'll see what she says. That's, that's a very good point, actually. その通りだ。特に中隊長級以上ともなれば、そのような薬物へのアクセスもしやすいからな。Right, so they actually are prime suspects. You don't tell them you're on their tail. 
So we can't even trust our own people now? Great! まあ、そこまで深刻になるな。あくまで話す範囲を絞っているという程度で、彼らを疑ってるわけではない。Right。貴様に伝えたのは、今のうちに情報を伝えておけば、そのような連中からの接触があった時に適切に対応できるはずという
最近の治安悪化はこれが原因の一つとも言われている。Right. They're like, we barely have enough food as it is. Can someone please tell me why that would make people mad? I mean, we're all Japanese here. That might even be friends and family that got separated among the ones coming to Seattle. ただでさえ貧窮している状況で、新たな移民を受け入れることで、満足に配給も受けられなくなるというデマが広がっている。現実としてそれに対応するだけの備蓄はなんとかなる予定ではあるだが火消しはなかなかうまくいっていない、right. 猜疑心が強くなっているからなこのままでは先住者と新規移住者の間に揉め事が発生する可能性がある yeah, yeah, but... たつなみ、貴様のその人を信じたいという思いは理解できるし、そういう貴様だから期待していることもある。だが、もう少し現実を見るようにしよう。<咳> right. これまでの話の中に、同じ日本人だからというだけの理由で、彼らを無条件に信じるに足る要素があったかそれは。誰もが生きることに必死だ。どんなささやかな既得権ですら争いの対象になってしまうのが現状だ。Yeah, I'd say they'd probably fight even more with the limited they have. It's like, it's precious to them, even if it feels like it's not much. <笑>安心しろ、タツナミ。状況を理解し、冷静に行動してくれる人々が大半だ。今話したのは、そういった人々に軍が甘えるわけにはいかないという意味でもある。Exactly, because the outliers can cause a snowball effect. Is it really that simple? 私は日本人であることを誇りに思っている。だがそれは日本人として寄って立つものが己の中にあるからだと考えている。Right. Yeah. 多くの日本人にとってそれは己の家族や友人、そして公部員ユウヒ殿下という存在だ。ユウヒ I'm guessing she is somewhere here. A sense of personal loyalty to her highness, Kyobi uh, Yui. You know, Kyobi Yui. Yeah, I can definitely relate with that. Even now, I can feel my heart swell with emotion at the mere mention of her name. Me too, man. Me too. <clears throat> Right. Right. The Major's got a point. This is the first time in years I've, I've spared a second thought about Her Highness. In the case of the Kai Gun, the Kai Gun is a very good thing. So, Her Highness will stay in Hawaii. So, 無理は承知の話ですがせめて一度でも殿下に慰問していただければそれだけで変わることも随分ある気がします Man, though, it's dangerous enough as it is with the food plant coming here putting her on a boat too would be really really risky Thinking ahead, we're gonna need to make, take measures to maintain so, social cohesion Having a leader that people can rally behind would surely make a difference Her Highness's presence would be an immediate source of relief for our long-suffering population The closest thing we have to a silver bullet The Major's face tells the whole story. Parading the Shogun around our Commander in Chief as part of a PR effort? Hell would freeze over before that happens. Something tells me she's going to. So this guy. プラントが重要戦略目標だからというだけではない、right. ここ最近のベータの進行がハワイではなくここを目標としている可能性が高いと判断されたからだ、really? ベータの目標がここじゃあ先の襲撃も偶然ではなく What the fetch? 確定的なことは何も言えん海底で奴らがどう分布しているかその正確なところもつかめていないしな。Right. だが、ベータの特性に鑑みた場合、このシアトルが都合6度襲撃されたことは
So it does feel like there's something here. Do they have the beta core here? Like, did they take it from uh, Yokohama and bring it to Seattle? That would explain a lot, really. It'd be the last beta hive core on the planet, and of course they would come toward it. It's exactly what happened in Yokohama. But still, like, is it, like, maybe that was what was on the JFK? Like, because they definitely came to attack the JFK specifically. One or two times is a coincidence. Six? Forget about it. They're doing it on purpose. Huh. Holy crap, those city lights. I was admiring just the other day. Could it be that's what's drawing the beta here? Seattle's a technological hub. Place has got to be chock full of high-performance computers and stuff like that. And everyone knows that the battlefield, the beta target weapon systems with powerful computers first. So it must be the city of Seattle itself that's drawing them here. Not like there's any of the metropolis of the West Coast at anyway. Not to mention that IJMDF has a bunch of warships and TSS parked in the Harbor District. Dang, does that mean the real target is downtown Seattle? And they got and and the bastards got cut all the way of the Japanese district to get there first. Interesting. Our scientists have no idea why, but the beta always take the long way around volcanic zones. It's happening now, and it happened all around the world in the past. Interesting. <sighs> We're working under the assumption that the beta tend to avoid magma. As long as that assumption holds, Hawaii will remain safe for the time being. That being, that's a big if, though. We've been at war with, the, with them for decades, and we still know jack about what makes them tick. Hawaii doesn't, like, Japan didn't have enough land to support your nation. Do you think Hawaii will? It's tiny. Hawaii Dang, that's a lot of water drop. Yeah, you pretty much have to trek across a giant wasteland just to get it up there. Uphill. Yeah, it's a no-go. Shikamo. Nope, nope, nope. なるほど。火山には人類もベータも関係ないですしね。それにハワイに日本人が集中するのはアメリカにとってもこのましい事態ではない。この意味はわかるな。Makes you an easy target of especially like a massive attack. And then here's the other thing too, like maybe the beta avoid volcanic activity areas because they do a lot of burrowing and digging, right? But burrowing and digging around active volcanic areas is just asking for disaster. So it just makes like sense. You just avoid the area entirely. Hmm, why would the United States not want us all to live together? Hang on. Wouldn't the obvious answer be that they'd want to split our forces apart? Otherwise we could easily occupy the whole of Hawaii. The Empire's military is too powerful to be deployed at a single place, not to mention that would pose an obvious threat to the Americans. Yeah, it's divide and conquer. Keep our forces split between Hawaii and Seattle so they can control the power of the Imperial military. But wait, there's gotta be more to this. There's still a lot to unpack. I gotta look at the political angle, too. The Japanese citizens living in Seattle are hostages, plain and simple. And the Imperial administration is handling them over to the hand administration that handled handed them over to the United States. Why? In one word, insurance. To prove to the Americans that the Imperial forces would never ever double cross them. And it's definitely got to be a big part of it. It all comes down to politics in the end. Right. Right. Yeah, 
So not only are we doing all this moving, but we're gonna use it as an opportunity to entice an attack, prove we can defend ourselves. It's our best option, yeah. Yeah, exactly. We're gonna bait out. We're potentially gonna bait out an attack on purpose because we know it's likely to happen anyway. So why don't we just plan for it? Hi. The French-Canadian coalition could target the plant, and some other people close to us would love to get in on the action too. <sighs> Our own people. Oh boy. この多古間組織地を守ることだ。そのことを忘れるな。ガチャ。は。さて、現在多古までは新規移住者用の居住区整備を急ピッチで進めている。A氏は強化外骨格の使用に慣れているからな。設置に関する土木作業の任務も当然